Hey guys, it's Britt. Today we're here to talk about Jesse and Lily from Do We Know Them podcast. They recently responded to some of the criticism that they had been receiving and they had quite a lot to say, but I want to focus on some specific things that they said and I also want to echo what a lot of their own subscribers were saying, but we're going to get into all of it. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so if you're completely lost as to why I'm even making this video, I will link the original video down below. But essentially, Joshua David Evans brought light to this situation and had a whole lot to say about this podcast, who they did not treat him fairly, and I stand by some of what I said in my original video. There are also some updates that I want to make, but before we get into that, I want to make it very clear that Josh himself made this statement on Twitter. I want to make it very clear that I'm reading this statement in the beginning of the video because it is not my apology to accept, and I fully recognize that. But even if it's not my apology to accept, I still have some things to say about it, and I am not obligated to like anything that this podcast has to say, to be quite frank. Um, I will hear them out, but it doesn't mean that I automatically have to like what they say or be fully on their side with the things that they shared. But Josh, who was at the center of all of this, said um, on the 24th, just a couple days ago, he said, I'm uh, still figuring this out. After having some time to think and process all of what's happened over the last couple of weeks, I felt a need to speak up from a more level-headed point of view. Seeing so many people make videos about difficult moments of my life is something I've never fully figured out how to deal with. That being said, I wanted to extend grace and compassion to the content creators who also feel blindsided by the Johnny situation. That absolutely includes Jesse, Lily, and Ethan, obviously Ethan from the H3, H3 podcast, who have all just recently released follow-up videos on this topic. I felt unheard, angry, and ostracized, which which was incredibly difficult for me given my past. My patience was limited and I spoke from a place of fear and pain. Rest assured that things that I need to own up to specifically will happen in my sit down interview with Swoop. To anyone struggling, former fans, content creators, parents, my hope is that all of us can grow from this rather than lash out. I'll continue to remind myself of that in the days ahead. Sending everyone peace of mind and healing, truly. He's tagged three people. I assume one I know is Jesse because it says it. And I assume he also tagged Lily and Ethan as well. And I wanted to put that in the beginning of this video because I think that it's important to know that this is how Joshua feels. And... As we get into how other people are feeling, I think it's kind of the same point of view is that it's not my apology to accept or anything like that, but there are so many other issues with some of the things that were said during their video, and that's what I want to focus on. And instead of doing this in a normal reaction style uh, layout, I want to bring your all's attention to a couple of segments. In their video, Do We Know Them, where Lily and Jesse sit down to address everything. This has been out for two days now. I am a little behind on filming, but I needed to kind of unplug for a couple of days, just away from this kind of stuff. In the video that they put out, they do have it put out in chapters, which I really like. There are a couple of chapters that I want to focus on. So in the very beginning of the video, they give a brief rundown of why are we making this video, which I thought was helpful. You know, you never know who's clicking on your video. The thing that I didn't like, and I will be extremely upfront as I always am, Jessie said that this was delayed because it was her birthday and she was out of town. 
And instead of just coming on and saying that they were sorry and owning up to it, they felt the need to put out this, what turned, in, turned out to be a 59 minute and 53 second video full of all kinds of explanations and details and opinions and whatever. Many platforms, he lied to victims, he lied to Adam, he lied to Becky, Ollie, everybody. So this has been a lot to process. The video itself is over four hours long. So people are a little bit upset of how long it took us to respond to this. I was not in town, full transparency. It was my birthday on Thursday and my son's birthday on Friday. And we left to a cabin in the woods with coincidentally horrendous signal. And it was the worst weekend ever. And we were just trying to figure out what was going on. We did not know about it at all before Thursday. Otherwise we absolutely would have tried to prepare something so we didn't have to take this long, but we didn't feel comfortable with one of us answering. I did put up a kind of placeholder statement that I think upset people more, including including Joshua David Evans, who is Colleen's ex-husband, who Johnny did accuse of several things in our interview. And for that, we do want to apologize for not including Joshua in the statement. We did acknowledge in the statement that we were going to film a video and discuss this further. We didn't specify that Joshua was the reason we were going to be doing that. Yeah, I think he's one of the main things we want to address. And it just felt kind of impossible to properly address him and our intentions towards addressing everything that's gone on on this podcast in any sort of condensed way. It just felt like it wasn't the right thing to do, but also can see how he felt upset by not being acknowledged at all. So it was just definitely an oversight on our part and we should have included him in our statement and our intentions in addressing him. As we said, the video is four hours long. And if you've watched it, you know that there is a lot of information in it. We didn't really feel comfortable talking about it until we had had the chance to watch it and to process all this new information that has now come to light. Yeah, I think it changes a lot of things. And the confusing part is that it doesn't change some other things. To be completely clear, we have things to own up to, we have things to apologize for, and we have things to change for the future so that we don't end up here again. So we acknowledge that fully. And although I wish it was this clear path to Johnny lied about everything, we platformed him, that was just a fuck up. It was, and there's also more to it. That I can't stand this excuse. So many YouTubers want to come out and act like Filming and editing a video to put on your channel is this big to do. For you to make a statement, it's like, oh, well, you have to send it to the editors, you have to write a script, you have to da 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 da. Like, if you really want to apologize and own what you did, that can be put out very easily. And I realized that, you know, I haven't been on YouTube that long and I've learned a lot during my time on this platform. But the one thing that I have seen, especially over the last year or so, is just how quickly a video can be put out. I realize that sometimes it might take a few days to kind of go through your thoughts and, you know, deal with your emotions and stuff like that. But if you come to the conclusion that a video needs to be made and you have some things that you want to say, it's not this big to do thing. And I'm sorry that it was your birthday. Okay, but you also made the choice to jump onto a podcast with your friend Lily here and literally platform somebody who was not giving you an ounce of evidence to back up the claims that he was spewing. Since y'all made the choice to platform him and allow him to spew this nonsense so that you guys could giggle and, you know, have this little lighthearted conversation and spill tea about Colleen and Josh. Uh, I, I call BS on the whole, oh, well, it took us so much time. Here's the thing. If you have two people on a podcast and one person is across the country and the other person is here, um, and, and you guys need to come together to make a statement. There's this wonderful thing called modern day technology. And it could be something where y'all both sit down. So it's camera side by side. You both could film your own parts and then put the parts together. There are so many different ways that this could have happened. It didn't need to be an hour long video. I stand by that. I've watched this video three times now because I didn't want to, I didn't want to come to a conclusion and then be like, well, maybe I should have watched it twice. Maybe I should have listened to it an extra time just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. I didn't want it to turn into one of those situations. I know that a lot of people will probably be very upset with me for having the opinions that I have. But if my silly little opinion of not really liking everything that was in this video is going to make you upset, I don't really know what to tell you about that. Because my opinion is very minuscule in all of this. Because I am not one of the people that they um, dragged or allowed, you know, vicious lies to be told or any of the above. So me not liking it really doesn't matter. 
Okay, so let's get into this chapter. Oh, I do also, before we get into that, I want to show you guys. Let's take a look at Lily as they're reading their response to Joshua. Two things about this I find really interesting. Number one, like, you guys know I'm not the fun police, but when we're talking about something this serious, and especially something this serious where they are in the hot seat, um, I find it very icky, the fact that she is sitting there drinking her alcohol and just rolling her eyes to the back of her head when Joshua is opening up about his feelings and how, um, how his emotions are impacted by what they have done. And to see her just sitting there rolling her eyes, and you guys already know I love a good eye roll, but I would never have the audacity or it would even, it, it would never even cross my mind to carry myself in that manner when I am being called out and the underlying fact is my podcast literally allowed a man's name to be defamed by somebody who was creepily obsessed with him for years and I platformed that person and chose to not even contact the man that the rumors were about. And I'm just going to sit there and drink my seltzer and roll my eyes and act really sassy and flip my hair around. It, uh, it's giving cheesy, I don't give a shit about this. Who cares about this guy's feelings? That's what it's giving. I've now seen his recent claims and feel backed into a corner to once again take my voice back. I've had the narrative stripped from me before back in 2016 till now, and I will not stand back and let it happen again. The claims of me being inappropriate one-on-one -on -one with anyone back then are fully embellished and a complete misrepresentation of those times. The comment and tweet he's referring to about me saying to a fan that their profile pic turned me on was in reference to a pic that I was in and directed towards me, not the girl. We have privately discussed this and made peace with it. At her request, I happily deleted it and apologized for ever joking about it in the way that I did. It was an awkward and terrible attempt at being funny. I never should have joked in that way all those years ago. For that, I am sorry. These claims are beyond hurtful and incredibly damaging to my mental health. They feel malicious and unprovoked. I've made my apologies and have owned up to what behavior was out of line during my YouTube years. I've done the work. I'm still in therapy. I'm three and a half years sober. I have a wonderful marriage to an incredible woman. I love what I do for work. We just bought a little house together and have an amazing and quiet life together. I finally have my chance at a new life beyond this awful chapter. If these claims continue, I'll have no choice but to get lawyers involved. I'm broke as it is, but I'm willing to fight for my sanity and truth. Okay, so a few things here. I feel like even the beginning of that, he is saying he has never been inappropriate one-on-one -on -one with a fan. And that I feel like is up to interpretation because you seem to only think things are considered inappropriate when I would venture to say uh, most of the things you did were inappropriate, including this tweet that you don't deny exists. Well, okay, so there's multiple layers to this, as is the situation with any time we talk about Colleen. So I will play that little clip for you guys, but let's get into addressing why we didn't reach out to Joshua. As People have accused me so many times of just wanting attention and I have always stood so solid in the fact of like the amount of people that would lie for this kind of attention is so minimal and so rare that why would I choose to believe off the bat when I see a that doesn't necessarily have proof because that's one thing people are forgetting. Like my story, I do have proof in files in like courts and like law enforcement has it, but the public doesn't. The public has my word. That's it. And it has literally changed my life to have at least some people believe my experience, like my soul and what I fucking went through. That has been life changing. So it's hard for me to sit here and be like, you have to have proof for X, Y, and Z because a lot we're not recording it. They don't have proof of it. You know, there's a lot of tricky situations that it's very dangerous to just bail all of this over and be like, oh, unless you have proof, that's so it. They wanted, they're saying that Johnny didn't need to have proof, but then they're sitting there telling Joshua, oh, well, you, you need to basically prove your innocence to us before we will allow you on our podcast. That is why people are so irate at both Jesse and Lily. And I'm not going to bring Jesse's history into this because frankly I don't think it has anything to do with anything and I don't think that anybody should be weaponizing it in this situation. To me it's off the table. I'm not here to talk about that but she did mention it in this video. Um, 
no, that that is not fair. You cannot allow somebody to come on to your podcast and just say all of this crazy stuff and then the person that they're saying it about, you want them to prove their innocence even though the things that Joshua, uh, quote, admitted to was not the things that Johnny was trying to say that he was. Joshua never admitted that he groomed Johnny. He did a blanket apology, which I think in their eyes is, um, in their eyes, it's working against Joshua because he did this blanket apology. But I know a lot of people in the comments, and we'll get into those in a minute, but many people were saying that that might stem from his 12-step program and being involved in AA. Because a lot of times in AA or in 12-step programs, and you guys tell me if I'm right down below, please correct me as always. But what I have read from other people is that a lot of times a um, a blanket apology is given in order to just validate all of that person's emotions and all of their feelings so that you can kind of issue that and hopefully start to heal and make steps towards doing better and kind of moving out of that chapter where you cause that person harm. Completely. And also one of the things that a lot of people have expressed that they're upset with us about is that in our response video, we also read a tweet from Joshua basically calling us out saying any other news outlet that had covered the story at least reached out to him for comment, but that we didn't. He was upset that we didn't get his side of the story. I believe the exact words I used was, I don't want to hear your side. And a lot of people are very upset specifically at me for being so standoffish. People just thought overall that we were being dismissive. And we were to a certain extent, but not in the sense that he was presenting us information that was relevant and pressing and would have exonerated him. And we were just like ignoring that. That was not in the way that we were writing him off. We were writing him off because he was someone at that time who had admitted to many of the things that Johnny was alleging. I'm talking Johnny tweeted, Joshua groomed me and Joshua apologized to him after that. In fact, none of- Where did Josh admit one of the claims from Johnny? I was groomed by Josh as a teen. And then they literally ended up doing almost the same exact shit he did to me. They are no different. So manipulation for a decade, what multiple sources, where did Josh admit to that to the point where uh, he's admitted to it and he doesn't deserve a voice on your podcast. And this entire thing of just, I'm sorry, like just blatantly believing somebody who claims that they have information that they're going to be releasing, for me, that is very dangerous. I don't think that you should be able to tease information if you're going to have a voice on somebody's podcast, then those podcast hosts need to be fact checking because these are literally claims that can ruin people's lives. That is a big deal and it's irresponsible to not do so. And that is my opinion. The claims made by Johnny in our interview were being made for the first time. And from what we can tell, they all do predate Joshua's apologies, which unfortunately do give kind of a blanket apology and acknowledgement of Johnny's experience, which made us think that there was no reason to doubt it. The first time he ever actually denied anything was after our interview. So here they go with the blanket apology thing. Yeah, Josh says he made a lot of mistakes back then. I'm sorry for, and I've read this before, so I won't go over it again, but he acknowledges your pain is real. Your healing journey is real. This is a blanket apology, but where in this did he admit to the things that Johnny was literally blaming him for and trying to ruin his life over? That is the question. They are expecting Josh to prove his innocence like, whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? But with these two, you have to prove your innocence and you don't get a voice. We we don't want to hear from you. I think that there was no reason to doubt it. The first time he ever actually denied anything was after our interview. So, so he had not at all denied anything Johnny was alleging on Twitter, which included grooming. Okay, but you never talked to him. How do you know that if you would have at least given him a 10 minute conversation, then he could have told you that? This is the thing, like just shutting people out when the claims are this heavy, this to me, these types of claims don't make for drama podcast type. Like, I, I just don't think that this interview should have ever happened. I think it's very messy. I think that it is um, trouble literally waiting to happen. And I, I think that it's a very bad look. And based on what I've seen in the comments of their videos, 
this is not the first time that they have had to apologize for getting it all wrong. So if you guys are listeners to, um, if you're listeners to this podcast, let me know, is this a pattern? Is this something that has happened before where they don't fact check and they get it wrong and they have to come and address it? I'm just saying it's allegedly because I haven't seen it myself, but it is something that viewers and listeners seem to kind of be getting really tired of and they seem to be getting tired very quickly. He didn't deny any of that directly to Johnny. But after our interview was the first time he ever said, hey, this is being embellished. And we found that to be like, hey, now the person that you admitted to hurting is on a bigger platform and you want to you don't want this to spin out of control. Had he tried to tell Johnny, hey, I mean, I know he said like you're being vindictive. But even when he was telling Johnny, I feel like this is vindictive. He didn't say you're lying about me. No, he kept saying your experience is valid and your pain is valid. And I apologize. Everything that Joshua said made us think that he was accepting accountability for the things that Johnny was accusing him of. So we have this series of events where I'm like, you're basically admitting to doing all of these things. And then this is all like point the finger at Josh. This is all Josh's fault. We were trying to be the good Samaritans and listen to somebody who then blindsided us. It does not give me a very, um, it just doesn't feel like to me they're actually here to take some accountability and learn anything. I just, I, I don't like the vibe that it's giving off. I don't appreciate when people have an opportunity to sit with their thoughts and come up with something better and they deliver this. And it's an hour of pointing the finger at other people, um, taking a small um, a bit of accountability for a few things kind of peppered throughout. But for the most part, it's, well, it's Joshua's fault because he took accountability for things. It's Josh's fault because he said sorry. Um, <laughs> You just want to be like, hear my side. I don't take kindly to that just because of my history. And that's when people are like, she's too biased. She just doesn't like pay attention to when there's facts in front of her. There was no facts. It was a man who was not presenting information that exonerated him asking for our platform to tell his side. And at that time, it felt like the absolute opposite of what we should do. If you can present proof that this person is maliciously lying about you, then absolutely. We will hear your side and we will correct anything. But that wasn't being provided. And so we have. OK, so you're asking for, for proof of him to prove his innocence, but you didn't ask for proof that Johnny was even telling the truth, but let's go ahead and put Johnny on the podcast because it's going to get us a lot of views. And that is why Josh called it out initially that, um, you know, this was obviously done as a way to get a bunch of views. It's hot tea. It's, um, a really bad look is, is what it is, what it is had this moral dilemma of correcting the record, but also feeling like we didn't want to allow someone who was accused and admitted to certain things to silence what we- What did he admit to? He said, sorry. He said, your feelings are valid. That is not an admission of him being a groomer or being um, sexually suggestive with Johnny. That is him validating somebody's feelings who was definitely acting, in my opinion, Johnny Silvestri has acted unhinged and he has exhibited Stan behavior. This entire time since I have been taking in the Johnny content, um, there have been a lot of red flags exhibited and you can get mad at me all you want for calling him, his, his actions unhinged, but I think that tweeting at this man who you were obsessed with for, you know, the last many years, that is not okay behavior at all. And it is not okay to sling claims at him and not give an ounce of evidence and continue to tease out like, oh, you have this big bombshell coming and use it as a way to build up your social media. It was giving you the attention that you so desperately wanted. And now it's giving you the attention that you probably didn't want, but you're getting it anyway. He believed to have been a victim. And we want to make it clear that had there been even remotely a hint of denial or trying to challenge some of Johnny's claims before our interview, we wouldn't have had him on because it would have been one person's word against another. But we were under the impression that Joshua was admitting to doing the things that Johnny was accusing him of because of how many times, like it wasn't one statement, it wasn't two statements, it was several statements where he acknowledges what Johnny went through and says that it's valid. So we definitely didn't think that he was challenging Johnny's entire account of what happened because he didn't. Really quickly, just to touch on what he did lie about on this podcast. Dude, let Okay, I'm not going to give them any more airtime because I've already listened to this just mess of 
pointing the finger and I think that it's kind of disgusting. The thing that I will say is this type of content in these interviews are not for everybody. And maybe this can, I hope that this is a lesson for them that there's just certain content that isn't meant for their podcast. If you want to have a drama, commentary, lighthearted podcast, um, then maybe you should just respond to what is readily available instead of platforming Johnny and shutting out Josh because he made a blanket apology. But I want to read some of the comments because I've been saving these um, out of fear that they were deleting comments. I don't know if they were or weren't, but I just wanted to save these. Someone said, first they claim they are not the investigation type of podcast, so their coverage of the case can only go so far. But then they accuse Josh of not providing any evidence for something that does not exist. And they had already had not asked Josh for any evidence for that thing, which does not exist in the first place either. And it was totally okay to ignore the glaring contradiction contradictions in the Johnny story. They feel justified for literally everything and still act like this is taking accountability. This video is so full of contradictions, it's maddening. Someone else said, to say that you're not obligated to hear both sides is just asking to be misinformed. You guys are being hypocritical. I hope you guys do your due diligence in the future. Someone else said, Josh is a victim of Johnny's, not the other way around. I don't understand the constant excuses and taking zero responsibility for platforming a liar and not at all trying to fact check because how badly Johnny lies, I highly doubt you didn't clock the inconsistencies. If you can't take accountability, then why continue to talk about this topic? Because it gets views. I guarantee that they will continue to cover this um, <clears throat> because sometimes people just, they, they don't know when to step away from a certain topic. I just don't like the complete ignorance of innocent until proven guilty. I don't like it. I don't think that it's fair. And that's why I say that there are some topics that a podcast should just not cover. Just realize, um, Either we can't cover this or bare minimum, we shouldn't be interviewing people. We should not be interviewing this guy because this could turn into a really, really big mess that then we need to come in and clean up because we didn't do our due diligence as the podcast host. Okay, someone else said, my goodness, you keep talking about how long it took you to process all that was in the documentary, talking about Swoop's documentary. But this video looks 100% like the product of two people hastily watching Swoop on two times speed to be able to pick up some of the same words from there with the sole purpose to make a fully defensive, passive-aggressive video to protect their egos. You are so full of yourselves, it's insufferable. You two are demanding proof from Josh for something that does not exist. Johnny comes up with all of these obviously contradicting claims. He cannot even get his age straight and shows no proof of it. Josh denies all of it, and he has no way of proving something that was nothing more than Johnny's imagination in the first place. That's literally what I'm saying. Like, you can't give proof for something that didn't exist, and I think that falls on both sides. And I think that's also why we haven't seen any real proof from Johnny, because it simply doesn't exist, except for his in his imagination. They continued and said... You now claim, but Josh apologized for everything Johnny exposed. Like, are you serious? Did you seriously read that apology and think that it was totally legitimate to lump the grooming allegation into some words that you pick up out of it? If you had any good faith at all, you would easily acknowledge the spirit of that apology. It's overall context and just like Swift did, you could see that Josh was not actually admitting to grooming him. Swift knew what that apology meant because she read it in good faith. What that apology means is actually quite clear to anyone knows how to read anyone who knows how to read and has good faith, even without the knowledge of the rabbit hole in the background. 
the least you could have done was to read Josh's response without rolling your eyes and giggling. But you come up with this video trying to justify why it was totally not unprofessional and unserious to read it like that. I feel like all the months I spent listening to this podcast might be a total loss right now, and I hate how confused this video made me, made me feel about you two. Someone else said, this is my first time watching y'all, and it's so icky. I didn't expect this video to be you guys just making excuses and the victim blaming and writing off your own ignorance. I am almost to the end and I kept expecting it. I kept expecting it to get better, but it's just making excuses. I thought you were going to actually be correct on the record. Using Josh's apology against him is gross, immature, and irresponsible. Wow, you two are two grown-ass adults and you can't even take accountability or apologize without victim blaming a survivor of DA. This podcast is absolute garbage. It's like you're trying to beat Colleen in some, court of, some sort of non-apology apology competition. There are so many buts in this non-apology apology. Just say you're sorry, say you made some mistakes, stop trying to blame Josh as to why you were justified in your actions and why he still needs to be accountable for some of the rumors that simply aren't true. Is this how your podcast typically is? You give po you give platforms to people without fact-checking? Then when you're demonstrated behavior warranting an apology, you can blame yikes. Not the best first exposure to you guys. You guys help Johnny with his smear campaign against Josh and this whole video is you guys defending your actions with a tiny apology sprinkled in. And that apology wasn't until towards the very end of the video, by the way. Even I was on Twitter commenting on Johnny's tweets like, where's the grooming? From day one, there was no actual proof of grooming. The only inappropriate thing Josh did was given it, give him his phone number and asking him to post on this era account, which I highly doubt Josh received any revenue from. That's not grooming and Johnny was traumatized by that? No, he was pissed that Josh ghosted him after the divorce and then took Colleen's side the same week the divorce was announced. And that's been clear since the beginning. There's way too much justifying your behavior in what was supposed to be an apology. The last few sentences where Jesse says, we are genuinely sorry, is all the video needed to be disappointing to see the classic I'm sorry, but from you. Oh, now that we've clarified the claims that Johnny made on the show, we wanna be clear about what we've learned and what we're sorry for and how we wanna move forward from here. I think to Joshua directly, we are sorry for a few things. I think we are absolutely sorry for not including you in our statement, like we mentioned. Maybe people wouldn't have liked how we condensed it, but we should have tried and like just put him in there because if it was me and the tables were turned, I would be pissed if I wasn't mentioned too, absolutely. so we are sorry. We are also sorry that we allowed Johnny, regardless of the context that we had at the time, looking back now, knowing what we know, we are sorry that our platform was used to hurt you. And I also just wish that we could have had more information at the time so that that didn't happen. Because our intention was absolutely never to purposely spread misinformation, to paint Joshua in a light that was not accurate. And I hope that the false claims that Johnny has made about Joshua do not continue to follow him around because he does not deserve that. And he is trying to, it appears, to take accountability for the things that he did do. And we're sorry that Johnny took advantage of that. This is full of so much doublespeak. The bottom line is you don't do your research and perpetrate rumors. You open yourself up to defamation purely because that's the rumor subject's only option to clear their name. People's lives aren't drama. Hiding behind the internet, saying you're just interneting by spreading publicly available gossip rumors and potential lies is absolute nonsense, especially when subjects are reaching out to explain themselves. This isn't high school, it's people's lives do better. I'm sorry, but I don't like this whole, if Josh hadn't apologized, we wouldn't have believed. Johnny came up with the accusations and he had to prove them. It's not the duty of the other person to prove their innocence, but for the initial person to prove that the other person is guilty before anyone jumps to believe them. This is so infuriating. Josh apologized because he tried to validate Johnny's feelings so things could end peacefully. Josh was the bigger person here. Josh's, Josh's apology never admits to grooming. He admits to giving a minor a phone number, which he realizes was inappropriate, to be a mentor and a friend. And he didn't do a good job at being the mentor and a friend. And to be fair, instead, he said he didn't groom him and got defensive in the apology. Then everyone would bash him and tell him his apology was fake and wrong. 
Remember, innocent until proven guilty. He shouldn't have to prove he was innocent. You should have to prove he was guilty. Maybe don't have any more people involved in serious pending accusations on for an interview. It seems like every time y'all cover something heavier than drama, this kind of thing keeps happening. With peace and love, it feels like you guys just want to have your cake and eat it too. If you're just a podcast, then you should stick to just being a podcast and not conduct interviews, especially involving serious allegations. You weren't obligated to give Josh a platform, no, but if you chose to only give a platform to one side of the story, then this is a situation you risk running into. It sucks that you guys are getting so much hate, but you guys admitted that you don't see what you could have done differently, which is an issue. In my opinion, I think that they're very sorry that things blew up. I think they're sorry they got called out on the scale that they did. I think they're um, sorry and embarrassed that Joshua let them know publicly how he feels about this. But this is a bad situation that I hope they can use as a learning experience. I really do hope that for, you know, most of the people that I talk about, like, I'm, I'm coming at things to say, hopefully it gets better instead of it getting worse. Unfortunately, a lot of times it does get worse, but, um, you know, I, I hope that people can learn. I hope that people can grow, but to see such a refusal to take actual real accountability and instead produce an hour long video full of pointing the finger and, um, not really coming out saying like, look guys, like we messed up, we will do better. Please take our word that this will not happen again. And we are genuinely sorry to Joshua David Evans. This could have been a four minute video. Instead, it was 59 minutes. And I think just to expect people to listen to an hour of a non-apology apology, like that other person said, is already a lot and then to get to the other end of that video and it not have a whole lot of actual substance for the listener to take away is frustrating. So I think that's how a lot of people feel. But obviously I wanted to echo some of those comments because I think that they made some very valid points and we'll see what happens. I'm still waiting on Swoop's video and her interview with Josh to, um, drop and we're gonna see how this whole thing goes a lot of people were not happy with me for my first take on the do we know them podcast and i think that a lot of people um you know i, I get it like it's tough you have these podcasts that come along and you like them and you like the hosts and then something like this happens and there's that parasocial connection that gets involved and all of that kind of stuff. But look, I don't listen to this podcast. I am simply a commentary channel responding to what is going on. So no, I don't have that parasocial connection with these people, but I don't get deeply parasocially connected to the people that I consume on YouTube because I have seen so many people have a clean record and then they do something and they're exposed for being an awful human being. So I do my best to support people I feel good about, but I don't ever go out of my way to get really connected to these people, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm just here to give my opinion. I'm, you know, very consistent usually in the way that I feel about things. And I, like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm not obligated to like anything that I come across online and that's okay. That's the way it is sometimes and it is all good, but I'm still going to share my opinions um, without being an absolute jerk and I hope that's what I did in this video. So I'm going to stop blabbering for now. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment and if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.